Hello, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. I'm Abdul Wahid Stevenson. We're at Medina College. We're in the Maktaba, and today, alhamdulillah, I'm with Ustad Abdurrahman, Muhammad Abdurrahman from Cardiff. Jazakallah, and he's come down all the way from Cardiff, and alhamdulillah, we've had a nice uh, majlis before this with some other students who are uh, new students, students who are older students of knowledge in the Islamic universities, and recently graduated students like Muhammad. So. Introduce yourself and tell me about uh, Cardiff a little bit, please. Alhamdulillah, wa ala salatu salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da. Alhamdulillah, from Cardiff, Wales, born and bred in Cardiff. Um, studied in Qasim, Kulit Sharia. Was there for about six and a half years. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Graduated last year, last summer. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Excellent. Okay, Wales, Cardiff. I'm not... Welsh, obviously, but my granddad lived in Cardiff for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you got two languages there. Do you speak Welsh? Yeah. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> Born and bred? Yeah. They used to teach us in school. Yeah. But nobody would learn. Yeah. <laughs> they Generally, they speak it in the northern parts of Wales, um, West Wales. The further out you go. Yeah. Um, but so it's not a language which is used. Speak it, yeah. It's not a language which is used in... Not mainly in the city. Like, if you go into the city centre... Um, well, the capital city, Cardiff, you'll see signs in Welsh, right? Even yeah. the police, it says police and it says uh, Hedlu, I think. Um, so you can read, you can read it. That's how you, you pronounce got, it, yeah. 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 Hedlu, it says, which means police. Yeah. Um, you'll see Cymru and stuff like that in Welsh. You know, I think Cymru means Wales or Welsh. Um, yeah. So you'll see English and you'll see Welsh. But people in Cardiff generally speak Welsh. People in Swansea speak Welsh. Yeah. Um, Newport. Even throughout Wales, everybody speaks, speaks um, Welsh and they also speak English as well. Yeah. But English is more, more within the city uh, city centre, the areas around the city centre, the capital city, Swansea, Newport. Yeah. You know? yeah. And the last. So uh, let's speak about your journey as a student of knowledge. One yeah. of the questions we've had, we've just had a discussion, like I mentioned, with a bunch of students who came down with a couple of. Uh, students that have recently applied and got accepted, yeah, Handel and Etma, and also a student which is currently about to finish the Mahad. Yeah, that's the after two years, for example. Um, so we've been speaking about. We had this discussion before, but one of the things that we uh, was talking about is why do students apply for the Jamia? What's the mm -hmm. so for yourself? You you've graduated two thousand and twenty. Yeah, uh, that means you applied. When 20... did you? I applied December 2012. Okay. Yeah. And got accepted. Go on. And then I got accepted um, late August 2013. And then I flew out January 1st, 2014. Oh, shall I yeah. remember the date? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember because it was the 1st of January. Yeah, it's hard to forget right? on New Year's yeah, Day. Yeah. Uh, you're on a plane. Yeah, it was going me, to... me and Khalid and another brother that got accepted here. Yeah. Oh, okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah, Khalid, who's a yeah. teacher at the yeah. uh, Medina College instructor, yeah, yeah. you and him are, you were... Buddies. Buddies for the whole... Zameel. Zameel. Yeah, man. في طلب العلم. Okay, so you got accepted first, you went out on the 1st of Jan, 20... Oh, what was it, nine, sorry? Uh, 2014. 2014. Yeah. Okay, so you're a recent graduate, basically. Yeah, yeah. Recently graduated, just... Tell me a little bit about why you applied in the first place mm. and, you know, what was the kind of the thing that motivated you to do that, to want to actually go study in another country for six years, knowing that you're going to be studying Sharia, knowing that, you know, what was the motivating thing that made you do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, alhamdulillah, I was seeking knowledge before, before I went to Saudi anyway. Yeah. Um, so I learned Arabic, I was studying Arabic for about two years, I was memorizing the Quran. Um, no. So... By the time I went to Saudi, I finished, what, 25 Jews, I think. Alhamdulillah, good. So I finished the final five in the first Mustafa. Alhamdulillah, yeah, alhamdulillah. good. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So I was seeking knowledge, learn, uh, studying Arabic, um, studying Mutun, yeah. the Sheikh in Cardiff. So there was like a bi'a ilmiya, there was a, an environment of ilm. Yeah. Right? Um, so I was actively seeking knowledge. Yeah, so that's, I think that's, even yeah. I think for myself, one of the things that helped me was... The masjid in, that I was involved in, yeah, I was yeah. a part of our community. Yeah. It was a masjid which was had a lot of respect for scholars, and we used to have yearly conferences where they'd invite scholars to teach mutun. So you was in an environment where you were already yeah studying. So studying, there was that yeah. Studying. 
And you know, the main thing that pushed me towards seeking knowledge was I don't want to depend upon anyone to tell me what you know, the haq was, the truth. You know? yeah. So that was one of the main reasons I wanted to go out and seek knowledge myself so I can see what the, uh, the ulama say themselves, you know, yeah. what the explanations of the books of hadith are, the, the books of tafasir, the major books in aqidah, um, how rulings are extracted from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. You know, I wanted to get to a level where I don't have to depend upon someone else to translate for me what's, يعني, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what the ulama have explained, what the salaf said. I wanted to access those resources myself, yeah. right? Uh, I didn't want there to be a, a middleman. So obviously studying Arabic in the UK helped me, يعني, it allowed me to enter that door. Yeah. Um, but once you've studied in the UK, you realize that for you to study a lot more and to get the tools of a, of a, of a talib al-ilm, you need to go abroad. Yeah. Right. Once you've studied to a certain limit in the UK, um, you need to go and seek knowledge abroad. So I applied to Medina, mainly applied to Medina. Yeah. Um, the documents I had was for, apply, for Medina Uni. Yeah. So <laughs> I applied for Medina University and then I came across Qasim. I came, I came across a, a blog that talked about Qasim and some of the mashayikh that were from there and some of the mashayikh that um, were there at the moment. Those it talked about Ibn Uthaymeen and his students yeah, who was yeah. there. Talked about Sheikh Abdul Nasir Al Saadi and Sheikh Abdul Qarawi was from there, and يعني so many many Ma- yeah, even a lot of Sheikhs that are uh, alive today, like Sheikh Fawzan is from Qasim. Yeah. Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abad is he originally from Zulfi. Yeah, from yeah, uh, from is, that which area. Which is, yeah, which yeah. is Qasim. Sheikh Luhaydan is from Qasim. Yeah. يعني there's many Sheikhs. Remind Qasim. me, we're going to speak about yeah. Qasim a bit more as well yeah. about the heritage that you're mentioning yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, just so people know, Qasim at that point there weren't any Western students, were there, or there weren't many. It's not like Medina. So Medina, you have yeah. students from, it's, it's cosmopolitan. You have students yeah, from yeah. every continent. Yeah. But Qasim is really only for Arab students, or are there that many? No. The, the program, basically, the Minha program for yeah. foreign students, yeah. I think it started in 2010. Okay. So it's recent compared yeah, to this. Very Islamic recent. Investment. Yeah. And um, it was mainly Bosnian and Albanian and some Filipino students. Yeah. That's how it started. And then it grew. Um, to where they they start accepting more Albanians, more Bosnians, some Indonesians, uh, some African students, and then they start accepting Western students. Right? Yeah. There was already a brother there, I think, who was uh, who he was doing his masters. He was from the West. He was from Canada. Yeah. Um, but we were the first British students there. First. First British students. Yeah. Ever. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> you got for the last Yeah. <laughs> So the first ones. Yeah, that's only for every British student that comes yeah, afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so we were the first first British students there. Shana, there was one American Shana. brother who went there, who was there before us. There were some French students. Yeah. Some Dutch students. Um, there was a German student. Yeah. So there were Western students, but there weren't. There many. weren't many, basically. There weren't many at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how? Yeah. So you applied and you already seeking knowledge before that. Yeah. How yeah. old was you when you actually got accepted? Now, one question I want to ask you. Yeah. Okay, look, here, here you are as a young, how old, 20, 21, what's your... What? Well, when I first got accepted. Yeah. Uh, I think I was 20. 20. Yeah. Okay, six years you're going to study there. Yeah. What about your dunya? What about your, the fact that, because obviously that degree, you're not, that's yeah. not going to give you... No, it's that's not. not a career. It's not. It's, it's not, not a profession. No, it's that's not. That's six years you're going to be doing something, which is, yeah. What, yeah. what was the most, what... Or you didn't think about it, it no, just wasn't... No, the thing is, yeah, when you're at that age, you don't necessarily think that far into the future. Um, so when I, يعني, as years went by, then it started to pop up a lot more, right? Um, and then sometimes I would think about what am I exactly going to do once I graduate, right? But then I realised there's so many things that you can do, there's so many opportunities. You can get certifications in many different things. You don't have to go back to uni for three years. Yep. You can go into IT in many different ways, right? Yeah. And I was interested in IT. Yeah. Um, so my plan was once I graduate, I was gonna go down that route. Um, and that's what Alhamdulillah I'm working on at the yeah. moment. Excellent. But, you know, in the years, I would think about what exactly am I gonna do? But then I would think about the, the great ni'mah this is, you know, cause it's, it's it's a massive opportunity. Yep. Not everybody gets this opportunity. That's right. Yeah. And on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives ilm to those that He wants khair for. Yeah. Right? 
and he allows those to tread this path and he makes it easier for those that he wants khair for. Yeah. So this is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants khair for me. Yeah. Right? So يعني, I thought to myself, I need to take advantage of it. It's only six years of my life that I'm going to give up now and um, I might live for another 30, 40, 50, maybe even, I don't know, 60 years. Yeah. Right? So compare these six years to another 50, 60 years and it's, Not, it's, nothing. it's a great yeah. investment. 100%. Right? It's a great investment. Yeah. Yeah, so I saw it as an investment for my hereafter. Alhamdulillah, good. Yeah, and for yeah. your dunya. Yeah, and for my, and for and my for dunya. And for your hereafter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. an important point that some people think that six years is a long time, but in reality, when you look at it in the bigger picture, yeah. And and as well, your six years, you are actually putting in a lot of work yeah. over those six years. You're spending oh. hours and hours reading and very studying. Intense, and, yeah. Yeah, it's very intense. Very, very intense. So, Alhamdulillah, 20, got to the Jamia. Mm. But I didn't tell you about how I got accepted. Go then. Right? Because there's a story behind this. So I applied to Medina, right? Yeah. And um, I applied. I got my documents ready with the intention of going to Medina. Yeah. I hear For about the interview Masid. process and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, no. Like, as in like, getting my documents ready, translated, you know, all of that stuff. Tazkiyah, yeah. yeah. you know, um, letter from the MP. Yeah. And stuff like that. Even though I got that later on for Qasim. But... I got that sorted, I applied for Medina, I came across Qasim. Yeah. Now, Qasim I've never heard about before. Right? And the funny thing is, I came across videos of Sheikh Sami Sqair, yani Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin's students yeah. on, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, who is he teaching in Ibn Uthaymin's, Uthaymin's masjid before I even applied to Qasim. So I would watch these videos, right? And I'd be like, who's the Sheikh? Who is he? Eventually I ended up studying in the same masjid as the Sheikh. Yeah. Um, so, I came across Qasim, I was reading, I read about all the mashaykh that are from there, the mashaykh that are still there, Ibn Uthaymin was from there, that's his markaz, that's where he taught, that's where his students Shala, are. Shala, you're a researcher, you like to... Yeah, so I had a look, right? and there's a funny story, I remember. I was, we were in the car, um, when we just arrived in Qasim, and I was asking the brother who was driving us about some of the mashaykh, right? And Khalid was thinking, well, where's this, where'd this guy here? <laughs> right? So I would, I would look it up. All about, yeah, like... so I would look it up, see who's there, who I can benefit from. Um, but anyway, so I saw it and I thought, listen, I've got the documents. I might as well apply. Yeah. So I went to the post office, tawakkalta ala Allah, and I sent off my documents. Um, I did it by that, uh, by post, and I did it by by fax as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the list came out in May, if I remember correctly. And I had a look at it, my name wasn't on there. Yeah. When you sent your documents when? What? Uh, December. December, okay. Yeah. 2012. Yeah. List came out May 2013. I had a look at it, my name wasn't on there. So I thought, Qadr Allah ma sha fa'al, inshallah Medina. Yeah. Um, inshallah Medina, yeah. Everyone now, has Medina, but anyway. Yeah, yeah inshallah <laughs> Medina. Now the Ramadan comes, yeah. And I'm making dua in Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me what's khair for me. Yeah. Right? Either Qasim or Medina. Yeah, you're still focused, you're focused no, I on... No, I think it actually... Was it Ramadan? Yeah, I was still... I still had some hope in Qasim, so yeah. I don't know how, right? But I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me... Alhamdulillah, believe in never loses hope. Yeah, yeah, never loses hope. <laughs> never loses hope, he's got, always remember, got that hope. <laughs> I remember I used to listen to a khutbah by Shaykh Abdul Raq al-Badr on Husn al-Dhan billah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have good thoughts of Allah. I would always repeat that and listen to it. And, um, well, like, it kept me... Uh, it kept... Like, it kept that hope. Yeah. It didn't, يعني, my hope didn't disappear. What's Husn al-Dhan Billah? Because I husn, think that's husn, important. Husn al-Dhan Billah Ta'ala is having good thoughts of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Having hope of Allah yeah. Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Um, so I would, I would listen to When I'm going to the masjid, I would play that khutbah and I'd listen to it and listen to it. And I'd always have hope. Inshallah, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. So it was August time um, and I came across the website again. I thought to myself, let me just have a look at the web, at the list. Maybe there's someone on there I know, Yeah. right? So I'm reading the list, reading the list, and then I see Muhammad Abdurrahman Muhammad, right? <laughs> so I still haven't, you know, I still haven't clocked, I realize it's me. I don't know why, this guy has got the same name as me, I wonder, where, I wonder where this guy is from, right? So I looked, it said Britannia, from the UK, so I thought, nah, that can't be me. What's this number, right? What's this number next to it? So I thought, I think I saw Raqam al Jawaz passport number. Yeah. So I got my passport, and then um, I looked at the number, it was the same number. <laughs> Oh, I was so happy that day. Subhanallah. I was so happy that day. Um, so from then is when I got in contact with the brother. He helped me out with the visa process. And then 
uh, we ended up going to Gunnersbury, you know, the Saudi, what's it called? Yeah, cultural attaché. Cultural attaché, yeah. And then we got our documents sorted. And there's a funny story there as well, yeah. <laughs> I remember, yeah, um, me and Khalid, we went to that place. And anybody who goes there knows that even trying to get through the door is, is, is an issue. Yeah, yeah, you need right? the point. You know you're going to wait hours to get that signature. Yeah. So, um, we went in. Guy couldn't speak English. So me and Khalid like, okay, what do we do? So we said, um, we have a Mawid with Saleh. I think his name's Saleh. Yeah. Right? We've got an appointment with Saleh. He was like, okay. Um, go through. So there was, a gen- there was a white man who was a security guard. Very harsh to us for some reason, right? Ginger guy. So we were like, why is this? It must be because this guy is not Muslim. He's yeah. probably doing it because we're a Muslim. Man. This guy must be, he can't be Muslim, this guy. Yeah, nothing to do with ginger, yeah, obviously. Yeah, ginger yeah. has nothing to do yeah, with no, that's 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 ginger. That's just a but, description. Yeah, that's because we, yeah. I mean, we didn't think he was Muslim. We thought yeah. he must be doing this because we're Muslim and, you know, there must be, there must be something. So um, we go into the canteen. We're just sitting in the canteen for hours waiting for a few signatures, right? Adhan comes in for Dhuhr. We go into the prayer room to pray Dhuhr. We pray Dhuhr and then we turn around. And we see this ginger brother sitting there. <laughs> you see the ginger guy I don't judge him. <laughs> and we're like, astaghfirullah, what did we say? Right? Um, we didn't say back of Salat, you can make Tawbah, yeah, say astaghfirullah. Yeah, yeah. We make that for him. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have said that, right? You shouldn't book, judge a book by its cover, like they say. So, um, yeah, alhamdulillah. Ended up in Saudi January 1st, uh, 2014. Yeah. Yeah, so that's when, that's when my journey in... For Talib al-Ilm in Saudi started. Started. Yeah. Okay. Another point we spoke about uh, earlier with some of the brothers was different faculties yeah. that yeah. you can study in. Mm. And, the, you know, the different kind of pros and cons, benefits. And at the moment, a lot of the students that are applying or are current students, they're going towards uh, the Kulit Sharia, basically, where I graduated yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. You graduated from. And yeah. What are the other faculties? It's almost like that's the only place you can go at the moment. What, yeah. I mean, talk about the faculties well, in Qasim, as they are in Qasim at the in moment. Qasim, yeah. there is Kulit Sharia. Yeah. There is Kulit Dirasat al Islamiya, yeah. which is Islamic studies. Then there's Kulit al Lugha. Okay. Right? Um, most of the students would either go into Kulit Sharia or Kulit Dirasat al Islamiya. Now, the main difference between the two is Kulit al Sharia is a lot more intensive. Yeah. It's a lot harder. Right? There's more subjects you need to study. There's more hours. Um, the subjects that you study are more difficult. Kulit hmm. Dirasat um, is a bit like Ulu, uh, what do they call it? Usul Deen. Usul Deen, It's yeah. a bit like Usul Deen. It concentrates more on Aqeedah. You do some Ahadith al Ahkam. We do a little bit of Usul. Yani, you don't do much, to be honest. Um, you don't do Fiqh. At you all. do Mustalah, a little bit At of Takhrij. Yeah. So it's from that angle. Yeah. Right? And the, you know, the weird thing is, when Shah ibn Uthaymin was still alive, Usul al-Din, Afun, Kulit Dirasat al-Islamiyya was the one that everybody would go to. Right? Because he was the Amid, I think he was the Amid of the Kulliya. Or no, I think he was the Aisq al Aqeedah, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And he would teach in the Jamia as well. He obviously he would teach fiqh and everything. Yeah. Um, but I remember one of the saying that everybody would go to Dirasat al-Islamiyya, now everybody goes to a Sharia. Sharia. Right? Which I, I found strange. Maybe the curriculum was a bit different back then. Ah, oh, Sheikh Uthaymin. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Uthaymin. If he's the Amin of the Kuli, I'll be yeah. there every day. Yeah, yeah. Sheikh Uthaymin. Yeah. He's a Masura. He's he's exactly, a... exactly. And you know, Sheikh Uthaymin, it seemed like everybody benefited from him. Yeah. All the Mashaikh that taught me, nearly all of them, they would always say Sheikh and I bin Uthaymin. No. Um, it's like Ibn Uthaymin was. He benefited, it seemed like he benefited everyone. Yeah. 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 Alhamdulillah. Okay, so in Medina, the Islamic University of Medina, we've got the we've got Kulit al Hadith, yeah. which specializes in Hadith, the Khrij of Hadith, hadith yeah. science of Hadith, and all. And it all, you, they also teach the other subjects, but not as intense. Yeah. Then we've got Kulit al Lugha, and that's Kulit al Lugha, everyone knows. Nobody generally goes there mm. unless you're. Most non Westerners go there, and yeah. it makes sense because you're coming back to the UK. Exactly, you've gone there to seek knowledge of the Sharia, not, and obviously the Arabic is important. It's very important, yeah, but not as a tachasos or as a speciality. Yeah. Then we've got Kulit al-Quran, which focuses on tafsir of the Quran and qawaid yeah, yeah. as, and you know, uh, the qiraat as well. Mm. Not many Western students go there either. 
to no, be honest with you. Maybe maybe, not many go there. Yeah, hardly yeah. any. Then we've got Kulat uh, al-Da'wa and yeah. Asur al-Din. And Sharia, basically. So these are the five yeah. people when I was there. Uh, they've added now, you know, so other uh, technical, is it technical it? colleges yeah. or, yeah. These five, all the students when I was there, they either went one or two places. No, they went either one or, one or three. If you were uh, hard working or if you were, you know, you'd go Kulat Sharia, Sharia or Hadith. Yeah. Hadith because of the legacy of Sheikh Al-Bani and yeah, our love yeah. for, hadith. you know, Hadith and, you know, being upon the Sunnah, the yeah. sunnah right? Of course. Uh, or the, if you're a student in uh, Sharia, you'd looked at it as being okay. Your your manager is not strong. That's why you got Sharia basically. That was that was the kind of that was the kind of thing. Yeah. But anyway, put that aside. Okay. There was Sharia. Mm. Then there was Usul al Din. Now, mm-hmm. if you went to Usul al Din, it's because you're tight band in your studies and you you know you want to kind of take it easy. You don't uh, want to be okay. you know you don't want to work too hard yeah, but, yeah. because it was looked at as an easy route. Easy route to mm. you know because it's a bit not as intensive, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but one of the things that became apparent to me personally is that the significance of Kulut, of Kulut al-Da'wan or Sul al-Din for a student that lives in a non-Muslim country, going back to a non-Muslim country, uh, is really important. Why? Because they, what they focus on is Aqidah and Tawheed and Firaq groups and sects, yeah. as well as uh, Sira and Tariq. Mm. And these are the subjects when you're given dawah in a non-Muslim country, because they're not obviously it's not a country which is based upon Sharia legislation. You're going to uh, be able to address a lot of the issues which are problematic shubhat that they have, for example, because you have so many different ideologies yeah, and so many yeah. different. Do you know what I mean? So from that angle, I, I've I've always you know said to new students that we had the discussion you know mm-hmm. here that don't rule out kulit dawah and sort of din because. For yourself, it might not be good, i.e. as good as Sharia or Hadith. Mm. But for the people you're going to be giving da'wah to, if that's your objective, yeah. it may be, it, will, it will definitely be beneficial. And it's not necessarily the weakest of the kulliyat. Yeah. You have law and stuff like that. And it's good as long as you, um, you mentioned, as long as you do the other things outside in the jamia. So yeah. if you, you concentrate on fiqh and usul, uh, maybe Hadith and mustalah and usul and tafsir and stuff like that outside the jamia, yeah. Um, on top of you know, some books in Aqidah as well, and you take advantage of what's related to uh, Aqidah and Usul al-Din in the Jamia. Yeah. yeah, then it's yeah. going to be useful. It is, it is beneficial. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a bit about Qasim and about the studies, your program, studies in the Masjid, studies in the yeah, Kuliah. Yeah. Let, let me... Well, Qasim is um, a bit different. Yeah. To Medina Because you visited Medina obviously With Khalid yes. and stuff You visited Mecca You visited Mecca. Riyadh Qasim yeah. is very different To Medina yeah. and Mecca And Riyadh um, The people are somewhat different yeah. They're not as open yeah. I would say as Mecca and Medina Even Riyadh yeah. يعني, I'm not saying the people are bad Trust me You will find some good people In, in Qasim يعني, How many times did things happen to us And يعني, Saudis and Qasim came and, and helped us, right? Like sometimes, dire situations, like life and death sometimes, yeah? SubhanAllah. Um, but the people are closed. Yeah. They're not as open, yeah. right? More conservative. They're a lot more conservative. Yeah. And um, you have to somewhat understand that this is their adah, this is their culture, right? Yeah. It might be, you might be offended a little bit in the beginning. You might find it a bit weird, right? Because I remember... I remember this happened to me, yeah. You know, generally in a classroom with your peers, um, you give salam to them, right? Mm. Okay. If you see them outside, you give them salam. Mm. So I remember one time, <laughs> <laughs> I remember once I had to learn, I learned the hard way. I remember one time, yeah, we, um, the teacher made us do group work. Yeah. They do this sometimes in the classroom, right? Come in groups and discuss. What's that? Yeah. So there was one brother, um, يعني, we came together, there's, I think there's three of us or four of us, so we talked. So now obviously I think that, you know... We're friends. Not friends, but was Zumala, you know, yeah. we've talked, you know, yeah. we've discussed. We know, know each know other each now. Other. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember um, at the end of another class, same subject, class ended. I remember I gave him salam, right? And then he looked at me like, يعني, what's, what's up? <laughs> so I had to act like... I wasn't giving him salam, <laughs> scratch my head or something, right? That was the first time it happened. Now, there was another brother, 
But I thought, okay, maybe it's just this guy. Now yeah. there's another guy, yeah? Um, this guy, I think he's been in maybe three or four different classes with me. Yeah. Right? Throughout the Mustawayat. I didn't really have much of an interaction with him, but you've been in so many classes. We know you know each other. Yeah, Your yeah. face is yeah, familiar. Yeah. You know him. He yeah, knows yeah. you. Yeah. So I remember I saw him in the masjid one time. Man, this is when the Mashaikh's class. He came, right? So I saw him sitting over there, right? So I gave him salam, right? And then he looked at me like, yeah, what's, what's up? <laughs> so I had to act like I was giving salam to someone else. I wasn't giving it to him. Or, you know, I had to act like yeah, it, yeah, it, was, an awkward, it was an awkward moment. So basically. I learned from there, right? If you don't really know the person that well, then don't try and, you know... They're not... They're not, they're not as open, right? Yeah, People yeah. aren't as open. Yeah. Um, I mean, bear in mind, I mean, is that I think as well, foreigners, i.e. Yeah. non-Saudis, yeah. Yeah. At the, up to that time hadn't been much in Qasim in terms of students That's very true. from Western, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, hold on a minute. Because even, even today, if we're going to be honest, sometimes if someone new comes into the community, you've never seen them before, and they're trying to, because of the... the uh, let's say, for, prevent and all this other stuff, there's a level of kind of suspicion. Yeah, yeah. Why are they asking someone a question? Like, who, is, who, who, yeah. who really is this person? Because yeah. of the, the, you know, the climate, basically, that yeah. happened since yeah. post-9-11 and up course, to now. Of course, So there's, there's always going to be that yeah. the suspicion of this foreigner. Is he, like, really, is he really Muslim or is he? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can imagine what's going through yeah, his head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, I, to be honest, I never understood that, yeah. right? But generally, when you get to know them and they open up a bit more, yeah. like, they it's open up, yeah. it's different. It's different. It's different. But I mean, when I've got they don't know you, there's that barrier, yeah. right? It's like, how do I connect with this person, you know? Yeah. Um, so you might find that a bit strange coming from the West, especially if you come from America, right? Where everyone is somewhat friendly. That's what I find about Americans mm -hmm. and Canadians. People are somewhat friendly, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you'll talk to an American for like five minutes, he'll tell you his life story, yeah. right? <laughs> Um, sadly, yeah, it's completely it, different. Yeah, so maybe look at that's a very valid analogy actually yeah. because I find the same thing in, in Medina. So you've got Americans that are completely open and they look at us as conservative, yeah. you know, these, yeah. these conservative English people. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got another level of conservativeness which yeah. is the Saudi conservative, the Saudi conservative yeah. which yeah. is in Qasim, for yeah. example. Yeah. 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 Because Medina obviously is quite cosmopolitan from yeah. a very long time ago, yeah. as, you know, as well as Mecca because of, of the. Pilgrims and pilgrimage yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, do you get what I mean? But Qasim, mashallah, it's a place here, yeah, it's very conservative. You would find a lot of people that are, I wouldn't say religious, religious, but they're a lot more cultural, yeah, right? Yeah. And generally with you being more cultural, yeah. you tend to be more religious, right? Yeah. You tend to up uphold more Islamic yani, um, foundation, so you tend to pray in the masjid more, yeah. you tend to do um, Silat al-Rahim, you, know, yeah. you come together with your family a lot more. Yeah. Um, so I kind of I saw that. You saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a lot more people with lihya. al adha Muhakkima, that's a qaida. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, you're Sharia student. Uh, just, let's just talk about that just for a minute uh, and apply it in this situation. Yeah, Some yeah. of the things. Yeah. Okay, what would you say? So I guess what I'm asking is that some of the culture, yeah. like you said, you can't, Islam, the culture that they have, their culture is Islam. Yeah. Right? A lot of it, a lot a lot of it, it ties, is, back to ties back to Islam. Yeah, so so there's yeah. no separating it from yeah. that's that aspect of it. Yeah. And then there's the aspect of al-adam hakima, meaning that certain types of uh, dealings or certain yeah, either sh the Sharia principle that we're yeah, speaking yeah, about, yeah. You, it goes. The, there's no definitive right or wrong ayah from the Sharia that says it's like this. Yeah. So it goes back down to the the ada, which is yeah. the custom of the people. Hmm. Right. So certain things, maybe transactions, certain types of yeah, yeah. agreements. You yeah. look at the ada when it comes to. Right. So in terms of يعني, the relationship with you, it would come from that angle. Yeah. Um, so you just have to somewhat adapt. Yeah. Right. Take a lot of things on the chin. Yeah. And that's what you're going to have to do as a student out there. Yeah. Or you're going to have to take a lot of things on the chin. Yeah. Like trying to get things done, trying to open a bank account, yeah. trying to get things done at the uni. Um, I mean, this is new really Qaranat, important. Yeah. I new, remember... new rules coming out from the idara, from yeah. the. Um, from the management of the يعني, of the uni, so many new things. So a lot of things you just have to take on the chin, you know, just accept that you're a foreign student, you're in a foreign land, you're there to seek knowledge, get your knowledge and go, yeah. you know? There's two things. One thing which is, uh, I remember when I asked somebody who'd already got accepted. So when I mm. applied, there was a group of our brothers that applied as well. They got accepted the year before I did. 
So then I applied again and I got accepted afterwards. So they've already been there a year. So they've got a year's experience. So I said to them, you know, what do I need to bring with me? Thinking they're going to say mosquito on there. Yeah. You need to bring repellent. You need to bring... So I'm thinking of all these things I have to bring with me to the Jamia. And the brother goes to me, you need to bring patience. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, it's a black brother and a very nice brother, a friend of mine. Mm. He's been a lot of patience. So I didn't understand what he meant until... We, until I got there, and yeah. it's on this issue, i.e. the difference in the culture of course. and having to kind of take it on the chin, knowing that if you go there to get something signed, you might not get it signed for another week, yeah. they, and they might say, come back tomorrow, yeah, yeah. and come back tomorrow. Of course. Right? Or another one, I think once I went to a mahkama, mm. and um, you know, it says they're open at, for example, I went to you know, 8 o'clock, or... Okay, when they say they're open at 8 o'clock, that means that they've come in at 8 o'clock, yeah. but not that they're going to start working at 8 o'clock. Yeah. They're either going to start working at 8.30. The mm. first 30 minutes for, is for you know, breakfast and catching breakfast, up or yeah, yeah. You know, they eat there. Mm. So if, you don't, if you're from the UK or the West, then you're like, okay, well, it says 8 o'clock on the, on, the, on the window. You should yeah. be open. What are you doing? You're knocking the door. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I went to the post office once mm. to pick up something, and it was in the Ramadan at the time of Iftar. <laughs> After we prayed, we prayed Maghrib in the Masjid Nabawi, and I went to the post office. And the guy looked at me like I was Majnoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ramadan iftar. He looked at me, he looked at his friend, he goes, This guy's coming to, to, to do some just work, stuff, to do yeah. get some yeah, stuff. Yeah. We're fasting, we're just breaking our fast, we're yeah. fasting all day. You expect us to be running to around behind you to yeah, do something. Yeah, yeah. And he's right. Mm. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I, I think he's 100% right now. Mm. But at the time, I'm like, you know, this is unacceptable, I'm thinking to myself, you, yeah, know, yeah. No, you know, you're supposed to be working yeah. and stuff. You have to understand the customs, how the country works. Like, even certain things that they may say, it's, doesn't, doesn't, they don't necessarily mean, mean to be racist, right? Yeah. Even though it may come across as racist. Yeah. Um, some, of the, some of the way you're going to get treated, right? You need to understand, you're not going to get treated exactly the same as the Saudi yeah. will get treated. Yeah. In all things, yeah. right? You're a foreigner, generally a lot of the time, they do treat... Saudis yeah. in a certain way yeah. um, and it when happens you speak to them the they'll, thing is they'll it... understand that you're a foreigner even if you speak the lahja they'll pick up on, on the fact that you're somewhat of a foreigner right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the time they'll try and help you on stuff but you need to understand yeah, yani, life is going to be a bit different yeah. so don't think you're in the UK or in the States or in Canada yeah. you need to understand yani, al-hayat yeah. you know uh, I, do think, I do think as Western students, we do go there with this kind of like, this, this complex yeah, where yeah. we believe and that we think that we should be cut like, you know, our way is the best way and, yeah. you know, you know we got customer service mm -hmm. and we've got this right, we've got that right. Yeah. I remember we was, in a, we was on Eid, mm. Yom Eid. After Eid, there was a tradition of the brothers in Medina. They would all go to Kudu for breakfast. Yeah. And, um, you know, and obviously... You know, when you're in the West, you go to a restaurant or whatever, you order something. If it doesn't come, be like, well, this is not how I ordered it. You mm, know, mm. I'm paying for this. You know, that type yeah, of British yeah, type yeah. of... But the guys there looking at you thinking to themselves, what are you talking about? It's a piece of toast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not toasted good enough. What, like, what's the... <laughs> they look at you thinking to themselves, what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, yeah. So it's that type of cultural, understanding the different yeah. cultures and being able to, like I yeah. said, adapt. That's true. The quicker you can adapt, the, the easier it is you're going to find to yeah. be able to... The easier you'll be able to stay there for longer. Stay there for longer. Right? How so, many people drop out? Yeah, one thing you need to do is also, don't try and stand out. Right? Yeah. A lot of people, sometimes, some Westerners, they like to stand out, right? Yeah. Show to the fact that they're from the West. And maybe they try to speak English a lot. Maybe they wear their Western clothes. When you're in that country, try and blend in, yeah. right? Try and not bring attention to yourself, right? Yeah. You, you'll keep harm away from yourself and you'll, bring, you'll keep away unnecessary uh, attention. Yeah. Just blend in, try and learn the lahja as well so you can make your life a little bit easier. Um, yeah, and you know, they say when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? Yeah, yeah. Just when in Saudi, do as the Saudis do. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you'll survive a lot better. Uh, it'll be easier for you to stay there for longer. You'll enjoy your time there more, yeah. you know? Um, even when it comes to sometimes a ta'amal with the mashayikh, yeah? Um, try and know some of the things that they don't like culturally, right? They might find rude culturally. Uh, some of the things that they don't find rude culturally. So you don't offend them yeah. while yani, not knowingly. You understand? Yeah, yeah. That's it's very uh, yeah. important. Yeah. It's very important, you know? Um, yeah, I think the, yeah. the issue of different customs and cultures yeah. is really key. Because a lot of people struggle and I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of students actually drop out. But it's not because of, it's because of not being able to 
get over the difference yeah. in customs and cultures yeah. and they take it personally yeah, yeah so it's almost like it's a personal personal attack a personal attack but it's not yeah, like it's, it's not, customs it's and it's not man you just have to, you have to learn and adapt tell yeah. me about your so your studies in the jamia mm. your studies outside the jamia what's yeah. what's your kind of program so as a student my study in the jamia would be from eight till about let's say one maybe one thirty right now from that time sometimes i might have a full day but it's not every single day mm. it might be once or twice in the week Probably I say once in a week. Now the other time that I would have free, I would always spend my time in the maktaba. Yeah. Right. And the good thing about Qasim was that your classroom is here. We're in the maktaba, look, and it's in yeah. the maktaba. So that's just to pull up. So on that. in your, the your classroom it's is important. Where... That's the place of a student of knowledge in yeah, the is. maktaba. The maktaba is, is, is the place where yeah. you should be. So my classrooms, are, your classrooms are here. Not on the shawari by uh, eating, by the restaurants always. Uh, not wasting time in the, drinking tea after. In the aswak. Aswak. Okay. Uh, so. Um, the, roo the classrooms are here, then you go straight down, go down the stairs, and there's the library, mm. right? So in between my free times, I would, I would always be in the library. Now, one thing that I benefited from that was, number one, I got to know so many different books, mm. right? I would use that time to revise for what I would study in the jamia, mm. right? Which means that once I get home, I have free time to do what I want. Yeah. Now, my time... After the jamia, I will sleep after Dhuhr, I'd wake up, Asr time. From Asr till about 11, um, throughout the week, even weekends, I would be studying, mm. right? Uh, sometimes, generally, Dhuhr should be after Maghrib, sometimes it might be after Asr. Yeah, Dhuhr is in the Masajid, you'd speak the about Masajid, here. yeah, yeah it'd be after Asr. Sometimes after Asr, but mainly after Maghrib. Um, so from then until Asr, I uh, from Asr till about 11, I would be studying about 11 o'clock, I would sleep and then start at the same, same thing next day. Yeah. Right, so that would be my weekdays. And then on the weekends, it would still be somewhat similar. Like Thursdays, what I would do is, um, Thursday I would take half day off, yeah. right? And this was the earlier years. The earlier years I would take half day off. So basically, what does half day off mean? Half day off means that after I've studied my stuff in the Jamia, and I've slept after Dhuhr, I wake up Asr time. Yeah. After Asr time, uh, go to the Maktaba. Mm. Uh, when, when I say Maktaba, I don't mean like public library. Yeah. I mean bookshops. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, shops that sell books. Yeah. So in Qasim, basically we'd go to Buraida, and Buraida is about a 20 minute drive. And there was two main bookshops there, the Maktaba al Rushd and Maktaba al Tadmuriya. Mm. So we'd go to Rushd. Same in Medina, isn't it? Uh, Rushd is not there. No, Rushd is... Not Rushd. Yeah. But Nasiha. Nasiha. Yeah, we don't have, you don't have Tadmuriya in no. Medina. You have uh, Maktab al I think. Yeah. Yeah, and Dar Nasiha. And Ma'id is still there. And Maghamsi as well. Maghamsi. Yeah, Maghamsi. Okay. Um, what else do you have? Rushd is by close to the Haram. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would go bookshops. Now, I would, cut, I would either buy new... Generally, I would buy new books. Mm. Every week, I try and buy books. It's Maimana. Maimana, yeah, Maimana is another one, yeah. yeah. Dar, I think Dara Imam Muslim is one yeah, that opened yeah. recently as well. So I would go buy books uh, in Rushd. If they're not there, I'd usually go to Tadmuriya, have a look at the books, um, buy books from there, then maybe grab something to eat, go back to, to my room. Yeah. Right. Saturdays, I would um, study until about, no, after, I mean Fridays, I would study, I would go to Jum'ah, grab something quick to eat, Come back to my room, study until about Isha time. After Isha, I meet up with a few brothers. Yeah. Go out, drink some tea, and do stuff. Chill out. Saturday, I would also be studying as well till about Isha time. Uh, even after Isha, I'd probably be studying. Is there, was there a jam that everyone used to go to? All the students would go and pray, and or everyone uh, for the drama, or everyone went different masajid, or was there one place that you'd meet um, up for drama? No. The the thing was on campus now they have uh, this specific masjid that they pray Jum'ah in. Yeah. Right. But generally, the one I would go to would be the one right outside the campus. So I'd go pray there. Then opposite is a place where you can pick up a bit of food. Yeah. Right? So I'd go pray there, pick up a bit of food, and, and then come and then, back. And then come back. and Come back, yeah. 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 So Alhamdulillah, you collected a lot of books of, yeah, while you were yeah, there, books, buying books, yeah. read through lots of books. Them. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So that's your timetable there. But obviously, you visited other places. You visited Medina, Mecca. Yeah, yeah. Tell me the cities you visited and do a quick tour around the Mamlika and review and was it always you and Khalid or by yourself or 
Uh, generally, it would be me and Khalid. Okay, yeah. he's driving. Uh, you Khalid, 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 Khalid loves to drive. <laughs> Khalid loves to drive. So, um, he would go to Riyadh, right? How long from Qasim to Riyadh? Qasim to Riyadh is about three hours. Okay. Yeah, we'll go to Riyadh. Um, leave in the morning, were you a night driver or morning driver? Nah, morning, morning. Morning, we'll Fajr, morning. after and go. Yeah, no, no, it wouldn't be Fajr, it would be after Dhuhr. Okay. Uh, on a Thursday, because that's when, it's the last day of the week. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. All right. Um, Medina, generally Medina, I would drive. Um, and Khalid would drive his own car, okay? Yeah. So he'd go uh, separate? Yeah, so he'd go two separate yeah. cars. Yeah. That's generally. Uh, and that's for the two week break. Yeah. Where Ashur Usaymi would do a Dawrah. And yeah. there'd be other Mashaykh doing Dawrah as well. Mecca, if we're doing Umrah, generally me and Khalid would go together. Yeah. Um, How long from Qasim to Mecca? Oh, it's about maybe eight, nine, ten hour drive. Ten hours? Yeah. From Qasim to Mecca is about, Qasim to Medina is about six hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere else you visited in um, Saudi? Did you go to Taif? Or? Yeah, I visited Taif, but it wasn't intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We well, got lost. Well, that's a long story. You got lost on the way to Mecca. No, I got I left at Hajj, so <laughs> and somehow I ended up in, in Taif. Right? You got left on Hajj? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean you got left on Hajj? Uh, that, was, that was. That was a, Who left you? <laughs> the group that, uh, that took us. Yeah. Uh, that's another story, actually, you know, like. <laughs> You know, you're when, sure you're got, there, <laughs> when you're out there, you go through many different things, Allah. And the, it's those experiences time, that you don't forget. Yeah, a lot of the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you somehow. Like, Allah will always come to aid you. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Allah will always come to aid you. Having Hosna done again, going yeah, back to the yeah. aid issue. Always, always. Alhamdulillah. So you ended yeah. up in Ta'if lost. <laughs> yeah, and on no, the thing was, I didn't, end up, I didn't end up, <laughs> no, I completed Hajj. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. Now, they said to us, if you don't come back at this specific time, but we're leaving. Right? Yeah. right? <laughs> now, you know the distance between the Haram and Aziziyah, yeah. especially when there's no cars. Yeah. And it's not... need, there's mad traffic sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we couldn't yeah, find Yeah, no, no, it'll take you an hour. It could take yeah, a long time. It took us yeah. at least two hours. It was yeah. a two hour walk. Right? <laughs> so by the time we got there, they were gone. <laughs> they, right? left. they left us. <laughs> So we have the phones. Can I phone you? Tell you what's they, happening. They didn't care. They didn't care. Oh. Right. So this was way, a, this was a oh, is it a Saudi hamla? It was a it was a group. it was a it was a group that was يعني, took students from the jail. Okay. 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 Yeah? Fair enough. So the way we ended up in Taif was um, we went to go and look for a taxi to try and catch them in Medina. How many years you've been in the jam at this point? Oh, I was in Jamaa for six months. Oh, so this was early. So I'm still new to the so country. So still don't speak that's Arabic what, that's properly. That's why I'm, I'm, like, I'm serious. I'm shocked. Yeah, yeah. Right? They left us. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, actually, I was so... I know, mean, if, if it was five years on the line, you would have yeah, saw yourself out. It's yeah. no big deal. But Three I'm still years, new to but the six country. months, I haven't got a clue what's right? going on. So, um, we tried to catch catch them in Medina. So, we looked for a taxi. Yeah. And you know the prices in Hajj are extortionate, Yeah, yeah of right? course, yeah, yeah. So he said how... Uh, not extortionate, it's just the it's season. Much, it's yeah, a monsoon. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how it is, isn't so, it? So um, we said to him how much... Supply and demand. Yeah. Business. Supply, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We said to him how much? He said 700. We said, no, Afwan, uh, we don't have that kind of money. We get 800 real money. Yeah, we don't have that kind of money. Um, so we said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a Sabco bus, you know, the yeah. big buses, yeah, coaches. Yeah. To try and get us to Qasim. Yeah. So we went to, and that's the places to catch the ticket or to get the tickets for that bus is um, by the Haram. Yeah. Right? So somehow we got to the Haram. Went we, back to the yeah, Haram. Yeah, went back to the Haram, right? With our bags and everything, right? I got a heavy bag. I'm carrying it one side, the other brother's carrying it by the other <laughs> side, right? So um, we, we come to the booth, right? It's an outside booth. It's a booth that's outside, and there's chaos going on. So the guy gets angry. And he closes the window. He says, I'm not selling any tickets. <laughs> so we can't get tickets now. Yeah. Now, we're stranded in Mecca, okay? We don't know what to do. Alhamdulillah, a nice place to be stranded, but, yeah, yeah, but you're intended to get back to Khazim. Yeah, it's, you're not, it's you're not, not planning the best place to... when you don't have anywhere to stay, yeah. especially in that heat, you know, yeah. Mecca heat. Um, so we, we saw a brother from the Jamia, right? So Khazim from your Jamia? Yeah, yeah, from Ethiopia. Somehow he appeared from somewhere, <laughs> right? Um, because we went after that, we went to the taxis to see if they could take us to Qasim, and everybody we asked said, "No, we're not going to Qasim." Yeah. Okay. So one of the brothers said to the Ethiopian brother said to us, "Listen, what you should do is go to Taif, yeah, catch a Sabco bus from Taif, mm. 
What we should have done is caught a taxi from there to Medina, right? But he said, no, no, I'll take you to Ta'if. But we weren't thinking, we didn't yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. he was still new to the country. So he took us to Ta'if for, I think, 100 riyal, 120 riyal. So we end up in Ta'if, go to the sad post station. Um, we say, we want a bus to Qasim. He said, okay. It's 12 o'clock at midnight now. Yeah. Um, and then... So you're says, tired at this yeah, point. You're really exhausted. Tired. You've been walking a lot, yeah. carrying a heavy bag, okay, so stressed tired. out. Even my throat was hurting me. Yeah. Right? So I got rid of that somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a drink, you know, the lemon drink? Yeah. Lemon juice, I got rid of it, alhamdulillah. Now, what happened was we went to the, the station, right? And we said, we want a bus to Qasim. He said, okay, it's 12 o'clock midnight now. And we said, what time? He said, four o'clock, <laughs> right? We said, alhamdulillah, okay, four hours. It's not too he bad. said, no, not four o'clock in the morning, 4 p.m. <laughs> next day, right? I, mean, I, I was like, oh, 14 hours. Yeah, 14 hours. 16 hours. 16 hours. So we said, oh, what are we going to do now? We were stranded in life now. So ev outside every Sabco station, there's a bunch of taxis yeah. looking for customers. So we go to the ta each taxi we go to, we say, can you take us to Qasim? They laugh at us, <laughs> right? Because Qasim is so far. Yeah, no one's going to Qasim. It's now, not a journey. Now, we found uh, a driver and the driver said, I'm going to Riyadh and Qasim is on the way, so I'll take you. So we jumped in the car and there was a another customer in the passenger seat, right? The front passenger seat. So he asked us, how much is he charging you? So we said a certain amount. So him, the, 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 the passenger, or the cust that customer, and the guy, the, the, the driver, started getting into an argument. Right? Because he's charging us less than he's charging him, right? So, so he, then, he asked you how much yeah. the taxi driver, okay. Yeah. I thought so, you were asking him, but nah, go on. So he asked us. So then, um, taxi driver starts lying. He says, no, no, I, I said to them this much. So then we realized, nah, this guy's a crook. So we left, everybody left the taxi. So now we don't have a taxi, right? Now we're just looking around, looking around. Wasn't, couldn't you have kind of like just, just firmed it and just went and just nah, see what happened nah, at the end the of the journey? Nah, you don't want man. Some yeah. of these taxi drivers, They're gonna yeah? just... No, the thing is, a lot of these taxi drivers in Saudi, you need to be aware, a lot of them take drugs. Yeah. So they're driving and they're on drugs, Yeah. right? And they're not driving at 120 kilometers an hour. Yeah. They're driving 180 kilometers an hour. Yeah. yeah. The drugs to keep them awake, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And there's, so they can there's make I know money. at least two brothers here yeah, that got into accidents through these taxis. One of the brothers he couldn't walk for six months. Mm. Yeah, so you're it's, right. It's, it's dangerous. Very dangerous yeah. Right. Now, yeah, okay. We find uh, a guy. <clears throat> yeah, he's got a Nissan pickup truck. Old one, probably 99, maybe 2000, 2001. Yeah, yeah. it's an old pickup truck. He said, "I'll take you Qasim. Just find two more passengers." Alhamdulillah, out of nowhere, two passengers came, right? <laughs> so, I was, we, I was, personally, I was a bit suspicious about these guys. I said to them, so when did you guys get here, right? They were like, 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. today. So you're leaving now? I was like, yeah. The reason I was suspicious is because in Saudi Arabia, especially if you come from Qasim and Riyadh, nearly everybody has a car, mm. right? Nearly everyone has a car because it's so vital, Yeah. right? This, public transport is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these guys... Seemed like they, they came to, all the way from Qasim to Taif without a car, now they're going back without a car. So we jump in a taxi, and now he's taking us down some dangerous roads. And at, you know, at this moment, I'm so Six. angry, yeah? yeah? I've given up. You know, when you're so angry, you've just, like, just given up on everything. So I'm just sitting there, driver smoking cigarettes, a cigarette. The guy in the front passenger seat is uh, smoking a cigarette. So now the Saudi guy sat between me and the other brother that was with me. So he pulls out his box of cigarettes, right? So I said to him, what are you doing? He said, smoking a cigarette. I said, no, you're not. Put that back in your pocket, yeah? <laughs> so he puts it back in his pocket. Now, um, these guys are enjoying each other's company. It's like they've been best friends forever. For a long time, right? yeah. Laughing and joking and, and I'm just sitting there tired and angry, and yeah. just, you know? And at that point, do you understand anything they're saying or we can pick no, up no, on No, no, yeah, I, I can understand, I can okay, understand, good. yeah, I can understand. Yeah. Because my Arabic was, I studied Arabic for two Before, years. Before, yeah, yeah. So you had to see the My Arabic, alhamdulillah, you know, it was, it was at a good level. Uh, I just had to pick up on the lahja. Now, um, every time we would try and stop, at, we would stop at a, a service station, he would try and jump in, try and get the window seat so he can start smoking. Yeah. So I tell him, no, get in. You're in not smoking. Door. Yeah, you're not smoking. Right? And then... Um, Eventually, he came around and he sat on the other, the other side. Yeah. Somehow he got through the other brother. So now this guy, the driver's smoking. 
The guy in the passenger seat is smoking. Oh, the guy in the back is smoking. And the guy on the, on the left side. I mean, is they're smoking. smokers, aren't they? What, I mean. So they're all smoking now and they're all enjoying each other's company. And I'm just, it's just Ta'ib, you know, it's punishment, <laughs> right? But I, the thing is, I'm being patient because I just completed my Hajj, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, I need to be patient. I just completed my Hajj. Um, yani, it was like a test straight ish, after. Yeah, I should, you know, I should be better after this. So I was just patient the whole time. Eventually, we got back to Qasim. He dropped them off in the middle of the motorway. I don't know where these guys went. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, he stopped in the motorway, yeah. And the motorway, it was on a hill. And then they just went off into the distance. I don't know where these guys went, where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah, I got back to Qasim. And then, um, alhamdulillah, life was a bit different from then on. But, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, that, it yeah. was a good experience. It was a good, very good experience, yeah. Very Hajj good. became... Yeah. Ha Hajj, yeah, exactly. literally, became yeah. a, a proper... On top of the fact that Hajj was already somewhat difficult. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And that, was that your first Hajj? Yeah, my first Hajj, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. And then, inshallah, you can made Hajj yeah, yeah. subsequent years and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, tell me a bit about towards the end. So you've recently graduated, you've just come back. We were, yeah. like I said before, earlier we were speaking with, uh, I think, uh, Omar Jamaica graduated, I think, before 10 years before I went there. Mm. And then I graduated in 2008. You're 2020, yeah. and the students that have just started now, they'll be graduating in 2030. So yeah. tell me a bit about what you're currently doing, teaching in the masjid, and uh, um, have your... At the moment... Uh, oh, you've got your online yeah. stuff so that you do. At the moment, do. I've got oh, a few classes that I teach online, yeah. Uh, yeah, only through WhatsApp and phone and stuff, you know, yeah. um, Zoom and that, not Zoom, Skype. Um, and I started uh, Sahibi Institute, which is like an online institute... It's both for complete beginners who want to learn yeah. the basics of the deen. And we've got a, uh, a section for people that want to do Drasat Ulum Shariya, like basic Mutun Ulmiya. Obviously, we haven't, we're still in the beginning stages of both, yeah. right? Um, completely the basic Aqeedah one for the beginners. Um, and we're doing something about yani, learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now yeah. at the moment. As for the other section, then completed the practical steps on how to seek knowledge. So the books a person should study, how yeah. to go about studying. Um, Where is that available? Is that available? It's on YouTube. Yeah. It's on YouTube yeah, at the moment. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. It's on YouTube, and yani, part of that introduction or study guide, uh, the guide for student of knowledge, right? That practical steps is part of it, and then we've got an etiquette one now at the moment. We've done the first one, which is Talib al-ilm ma'a nafsihi, right? Okay, the student good. of knowledge with the inner self. Yeah. Um, it's about twenty, about thirty minutes, so it's not too long, you know. Perfect. Um, we've just got a few more to go related to etiquettes and then we're going to start into So is it, is it live and then it gets uploaded or do you have to wait till it's uploaded to do it? No, How it's does it work? uploaded. It's okay. So it's going to be like pre-recorded lessons. Yeah. So it's going to be a course where you can take your time, right? Inshallah there'll be exams and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Inshallah we're going to put the link in there yeah. in the description, description so yeah. that people yeah. can access it. To Definitely. the channel and benefit because yeah. it's important to know how to of be course. a student. It's very important. The steps yeah. as well as the practical. Yeah, especially if you're going to go out there and study, you need to understand that you're going out there for six years. Yeah. Now, six years is a uh, is long enough, and it's a good time for you to become muasal, right? For you to become, yani, attain the foundational tools a student of knowledge needs. Yeah. Now, for you to do that, you need to know what to study. When to study, how to study it, what to memorize, um, how to memorize it. Um, you need to plan your six years out. Yeah. All right. You need to. Your day needs to be filled of, of, of filled with you just studying. Mm. You can't be wasting time. Why? Because this time is precious. It's a ni'mah. This is a gift from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You need to take advantage of it. Take advantage of your summers. Teach. Benefit the people. Summarize. Read. And have ulul himma. Right. Mm. Don't go out there with the intention of just learning some knowledge and then coming back and then spreading it and staying at that level forever. Mm. Okay, you should be a person who has ulul him. And what's the difference when you when it comes down to the the basic foundation? What is the difference between a you and the scholars who have written these books? Mm. Both of you are created by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Both of you are uh, humans who have life, right? Mm. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, has given that alim tawfiq to seek, seek mm. knowledge and he took advent, uh, advantage of it mm. and he studied, worked hard, benefited the people, authored um, and now he's reaping the reward from mm. before 
Now, what is preventing you from doing the same thing and mm. reaching that high level? Mm. There's nothing preventing you except yourself. Yeah. As long as, long as you seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have ulul al himma, right? You yani, reach for the stars, yeah. right? They say that al muallaf is al muallaf is waladul alim al mukhallad, right? That the, the book, the thing that you author is considered to be the child that lives on for, forever. Yeah. Why? Because once you die, that's the thing that people are going to benefit from. Yeah. Now, authoring books are very important. Yani it helps you solidify your knowledge, mm. helps you see where your weaknesses are, on top of that teaching as well. But you can also create programs, you know, um, have some type of content online that people can benefit from yeah. for 10, 20, 30, maybe 50, 60 years. Yeah. Right? Benefit the people. Think about it as an investment. Yeah. Right? You see how people, when they have money, those that are, um, who are, who know how to deal with money, right? Mm. You see that they look for the best places where they can invest in their yeah. money so it can grow. You as a talib al-ilm need to look for the best things that you can invest in so it, you can reap the reward for many, many years once you've passed away. Yeah. You know, look at some of these books like uh, Imam, I think uh, Tafsir al-Qutb is here. Imam al-Qutb, when he wrote his tafsir, right? He wrote it and he said, it's a dhakhiratan liyom yamsi, right? Wa amalan salihan ba'da mawti. It's an investment, a reward for my hereafter yeah. and for the day I die, mm. right? And he had the intention that, inshallah, I'm going to write this and once I die, people are going to benefit from yeah. it. And look at it now. Yani it's, it's one of those. How many people have a tafsir al yeah. How many people benefit from it? Yeah. Look at Imam al nawi Perfect mm. example, Imam al nawi وَلَا نُزَكِي عَلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدًا right? mm. We don't say he's from the people of Jannah or he's from the special people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved mm. but there was something special about Imam al nawi mm. and that thing must have been Al-Ikhlas no. Why? Because when you're mukhlis to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're sincere to Allah Allah will raise you yeah. and he will give you opportunities to reap reward mm. right? to attain his mercy and his forgiveness and his reward Imam al nawi look at the books he's written Look at Arba'un al How many mm. people have memorized Arba'un al yeah. Throughout history, how many people have taught it and explained yeah. it and benefited from it and acted upon it? And all of that, Imam Nawi is getting rewarded. He's getting for. rewarded for. Look yeah. at his Minhaj al Talibin, right? Mm. Look at his Taqrib, mm. that uh, As Suyuti has a Sharh of. Yeah. Look at his Rawdat al Talibin. Look at his Sharh on Al Muhaddab. Look at his Sharh on Sahih Muslim. Yeah, on all right? of the sciences. All how of the many sciences. people have benefited yeah. from it? You know? And he died um, young. And he died young. Subhanallah. Yeah, so the, fir the first sharh explanation that you think of when it comes to Sahih Muslim is the sharh of Imam al Imam Nawi is one, yeah. Subhanallah. So, so Ulul Himma. Ulul al Himma. Ulul al Himma. And Ikhlas. And Tawfiq from Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani when it comes to Ikhlas, just know that you're doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't think about impressing others. Don't think about what will other people think about me. How can I make people think khair of me in terms of yani for my ilm and stuff like that? Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala, right? And think about what Ibn Abbas said. He said, uh, 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 right? mm. He said, I sought knowledge humbly, right? Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised me with izzah and nobility, and then I became the one that was sought. Right? Yeah, so you sought must be humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to be sincere. You have to have husn al billah. You have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. Mm. Why? Because if Allah does not give you tawfiq, you won't go anywhere. You won't benefit at all. Mm. You won't act upon your knowledge. You won't benefit from your knowledge. And it will be an evidence against you on the Day of Judgment. No. And that's one of the worst things. You don't want to be that person who, when it comes on the Day of Judgment, who, com who comes on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them, you learned this and you learned this and you learned this. Did you act upon it? Mm. Because you did this which was opposite to this. You did this which was opposite to this. Hmm. Right, you do not want to be in that position on the day of judgment. Yeah. It's a very scary position. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save I mean, us uh, from that. I think that's really important. Um, looking at, for example, your journey, uh, yeah. we're going to inshallah have a close of this. You sought knowledge before you went to the yeah. university yeah. Yeah. and you dedicated in, uh, your time while you were there, knowing that it's six years, it's limited. You're yeah. going to dedicate your time to seeking knowledge. Mm. And uh, now you're, 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 you've graduated, you're looking at how you, how you can aspire even higher yeah, authorship, writing books, yeah, inshallah. Yeah. Now, 
to somebody that's just beginning that journey, mm. what would your advice be? Someone that's just beginning. And if you were to give it in a kind of summarized, yeah. what would it be? Uh, one of the most important things that I would say after things I mentioned with ikhlas and asking Allah for tawfiq and dua and billah, I would say take advantage of those around you. Take advantage of the teachers around you. Why? Because when I started learning Arabic, the brother who taught me Arabic at the beginning, right? He himself went to Egypt for a few months. Mm. He studied Arabic Bain Edik Book 1. Yeah. Speaking was all right, it seemed like he was a quick learner, yeah, right? Yeah. So he, he wasn't yani specialized in Nahu. He yeah. wasn't an Arabic of like a professional Arabic teacher. Yeah, yeah. But he studied Arabic Bain Edik Book 1. Yeah. So I said to him, listen, brother, can you teach me Book 1? So I took Book 1 from him. Yeah. That, that's um, also, don't be shy to ask then as well. That's another ask, benefit. Yeah. Don't be shy to ask somebody don't to benefit Don't be shy to you. ask yeah. at all. People yeah. are willing to help you, willing yeah. to, to teach you. So take advantage of those around you. Yani I benefited so much from the teachers in the masjid, yeah. the other ikhwa that I went abroad to go and study. Um, and even till today, yeah, any talib ilm that I come across, I try and benefit from, yeah. from that talib ilm. Mm. And that's how you should be. You should mm. be trying to benefit from everyone that you can, uh, take, benefit that you can from. take benefit from. Whether they're more knowledgeable than you or whether they're not as knowledgeable as you. You should yeah. always try and benefit from, no. from everyone. So take advantage of the opportunities around you. If you see that there's durus going on in the masjid, if you see that Medina, you can come to Medina College and attend uh, the lessons here in Medina College or take part and uh, attend the portal. You have a portal online, yeah, a portal right? online as the, well. The lessons online, the dawrat that they, they do with the mashayikh. Benefit from everyone, yeah. from the people around you. Memorize the Quran, learn Arabic, and يعني, work hard. That's, that's one thing I would say. Work hard. Yeah. They say الجد بالجد يعني, what you put in you will receive, right? Mm. And you'll be prevented from ilm if you're if you're lazy. Yeah. So uh, what I think the thing is I think we go in our culture is a culture yeah. of laziness, oh, privilege. Subhanallah. But inshallah, inshallah that's changing for the students that are definitely, definitely. once they get more knowledge, the more they realise how valuable it is, the more they realise they're gonna have to work hard to <laughs> yeah. to get it and to attain it and to maintain it. Barakla fikum jazakallah khair inshallah. And it's been very beneficial and inshallah the institute is online the courses are available on youtube and they're yeah. free inshallah for the sahabi what's it called the sahabi institute as sahabi institute yeah yeah alhamdulillah thanks for coming down from cardiff Allah 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 and inshallah see you guys uh, you're gonna see him inshallah on our videos that they kind of come out in ramadan inshallah, inshallah. so